This is episode 2 of the World of Darwin series in which I plan on literally sailing in the wake of scientist Charles Darwin. To start on a healthy basis, I figured that I had to know more about the man himself. Who was he? How was he chosen to be the naturalist on board the Beagle? How did he find out about the theory of evolution? To answer all of these questions, I reach out to John Von Wey, who is a historian of science working in the National University of Singapore. He wrote many, many books about Darwin and is also responsible for Darwin Online, which is an online resource about, well, Darwin. So without further ado, let's call John. Hey, hey John. Thank you very much, uh, John, for taking the time uh, to uh, speak about Darwin with me. For a start, it's like a very broad question. Uh, but who was Charles Darwin? Well, you want to start right now. Charles Darwin, as a young man, was a member of the English uh, upper class. He was from a wealthy family. Charles Robert Darwin is born on February the 12th, 1809. At that time, England is ruled by King George III. Dr. Robert Waring Darwin, father of said Charles Darwin, wants his son to be a doctor like him and thus sends him to the University of Edinburgh. As soon as he went to the University of Edinburgh, where he studied medicine, he became interested in marine life, marine invertebrates. Darwin preferred to pursue his passion for nature instead of studying medicine, and for that matter, he was horrified by the sight of blood. When his father understood that Darwin did not want to be a physician, he sent him to the University of Cambridge to become a clergyman. When he went to the University of Cambridge, again, his real passion was not for his official studies, but in science. At that time, being a scientist wasn't a proper profession, and the majority of people studying science were priests who had a lot of free time except on Sundays. So Darwin probably imagined that was his future when he went to university, being a clergyman studying science. That's before, of course, the voyage of the Beagle came along. The purpose of the voyage of the Beagle was to survey the coast of the southern half of Southern America and to make maps. The ship was under the responsibility of Captain Fitzroy, who was 26 years old at that time. Captain Fitzroy thought that this was an excellent opportunity to take a man of science to places that normally no one goes. The goals for Darwin were not clearly spelled out. He was simply the naturalist on board the voyage, which meant that he was to study the, the land and the wildlife of the places that they went. Let's draw the voyage on this map. They departed from Plymouth in 1831 and they first traveled to South America, which was the primary goal of the mission. They sailed around the continent during nearly four years in total, going to Brazil, Argentina, the Falkland Islands or the Tierra del Fuego. In 1835, they reached the Galapagos Islands and from there they will sail back to England through Polynesia, New Zealand, Australia, the Cocoa Islands in the Indian Ocean, South Africa, and finally the voyage ended in Falmouth in October 1836. That's definitely a long trip. All around the world, Darwin studied nature. He discovered a lot of yet unknown species along the way. He had an amazing sampling of the wildlife and the geology of the world, and this changed his life forever. Without the Voyage of the Beagle, there would have been no Charles Darwin. After Darwin returned from the Voyage of the Beagle, he married his cousin, Emma Wedgwood, and so they moved to the quiet countryside of Down in Kent, which is now a wonderful museum. I think I'm, I might try to go there, definitely. <laughs> you must go there, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, I traveled all the way to Down House. You have to imagine Charles Darwin surrounded by a mountain of boxes of all the specimens he collected during his voyage. Yeah, so to tell you the truth, I did want to go there, but the trip was too expensive for me. So let's keep this idea in mind for a later episode. And now, back to John. Historians now understand that Darwin did not discover 
evolution or natural selection during the voyage of the Beagle. But he discovered so many puzzles, things that did not make sense according to the conventional science of the day during the voyage of the Beagle. Let's name a few of those mysteries. How was it possible that in the Galapagos, each island, although very close to each other, sheltered a different species of finch? How was it possible that, given an nearly identical environment, different species were created? How was it possible that the fossils he discovered in South America were so similar to the species still living in the same area? And those are the things that pushed him into considering or into accepting that life on Earth must evolve because there was no other answer to all of these mysteries. It took Darwin several decades to finally publish the book that would change the world forever on the origin of species by means of natural selection. He writes, Whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved. Darwin, who had accumulated so much evidence and so many arguments over so many years, single-handedly convinced the international scientific community that evolution was not a ridiculous suggestion, but was a fact. It is one of the most influential books of any kind in the history of the world, in that it changed our understanding forever of our place in the natural world and indeed how the natural world works. Thank you so much, John, for taking the time to shoot this interview. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to know more about the subject, I can only advise you to buy John's last book about Darwin. I'll put a link in the description down below. For the next episode, my plan is to meet a professional sailor asking the question, is it a sensible thing to do to circumnavigate planet Earth all by myself? So stay tuned. Please consider subscribing if you like the series. And I guess I'll see you next time. A bientôt. Da, da, da.